What's up, everyone? Jay's Two Cents here, and we're gonna kick off 2017. 2017, yeah, we went backwards, Nick. Oh, thank you. So we're kicking off 2018 here with our CES coverage. My fifth year attending, I think we finally got things under control in terms of what to bring and what's useless and what extras we need and stuff. So fifth year is the charm, but we've obviously been trying to scale down and be a little bit more portable. But before we get into what's in our bag here, a huge shout out to EVJ who has sponsored our CES 2018 coverage. So guys, make sure you check them out at evga.com. We will have some more direction on what to do and, and what they're showcasing at 2018 once the show actually begins. But here's what we got right here. As you can see, we've got a theme of batteries. Obviously, there's a lot of batteries. Let's talk about the camera though. This is obviously what is going to be shot through this lens and processed and into the computer and up to the internet for you guys to see. We can hold this with one hand and maneuver this around. This was kind of the theme with this. We needed more portability because although the FS5 is nice, this is much more friendly when it comes to portability. So this is a, a Sony A7S II. And uh, obviously we're not getting into the discussion of A7R2 versus S2, some great coverage on why one would choose one over the other. But uh, I digress. This is the A7S II with the tilt -a cage on here, which we have the optional handle installed. You can actually adjust the angle of this handle too, depending on how you want it. There's a little knob right here. But that gives us uh, something to attach all of our attachments to because shooting DSLR by itself, it's kind of a pain when you're trying to do video. So we have to have some attachments to get us to where we need it to be. Now for glass, I am using a Canon L series. This is a 24 to 105 image stabilized lens. It is a full frame uh, lens to go with our full frame sensored body. So that's why we have this, but the image stabilization, that's the most important part because that trade shows there's a lot of moving around, there's a lot of elbowing people and stuff. So we want to make it as, as non throw up inducing as we can, but uh, that's up to Nick. If it's too shaky, blame him. That's why he's here. But yeah, that huge zoom range of 24 to 105 means we have one lens that can pretty much get everything we need without having to switch lenses. We'll probably bring it back up just in case. Uh, that'll probably be one of our Sigma lenses. But yeah, this is our primary lens right here. And uh, it's an F4. I wish it was lower that we could get that nice bokeh and depth of field and, and whatnot. But this is a trade show. This ain't, no, this, ain't, this ain't no glamour show. So this will get the job done. For audio though, <clears throat> Now it's being mated to the camera here with our Metabones smart adapter. This is not a speed booster, which would have been nice because of the F4, but this is how we're connecting obviously our Canon glass to our Sony body. Now for audio, we've got our Sony XLR A1M, which is a dual XLR input. It's got its preamps and stuff, but it connects to the A7 via a hot shoe. So it gets power and it communicates with the camera through the hot shoe mount, which you can see right here. So there's no extra batteries to worry about, no interface to worry about. It just the, cam or the, the camera automatically recognizes that it's a Sony product plugged in and then just works, which is great. So we've got our Sennheiser AVX wireless system here that goes with our wireless lav. Then we've got an Audio-Technica 4053B hypercardioid uh, shotgun mic, which is gonna be used obviously for on-camera scratch audio. But yeah, this is our setup right here. Now in terms of batteries and keeping this thing running, of course it's got its tiny little battery and that's the problem with these, that's, this ain't gonna last us very long. This would last us like 35 minutes of shooting. We'll be doing 1080p videos at CES just for the sake of upload too. We're gonna be stuck with hotel and, and cellular uploads. So 1080p, but even shooting 1080p, that battery would go fast. So here's what we've got. We've got an army of battery banks because guess what? The Sony, the A7S II, as long as you have a battery in the camera, you can actually power your camera off of external batteries. So we've got like, oh, I don't know, 55,000 milliamps worth of battery right here between these three. They all have multiple outputs for charging, which means we can charge our AVX system if we need to. We can charge, uh, well, I guess that's about it. But we can charge a camera too, obviously. And then of course we have an extra Sony battery for that as well. We've got our Sony chargers. We have our light ch uh, chargers as well as our batteries for our lights because we are going to be bringing this guy right here. This is the, this is an ICANN light. I don't even know the model number, to be honest with you. It's a OYB240, whatever. This is a bi LED light that puts out a ton of light that we're gonna be bringing because some of the suites are extremely underlit. This is versatile so that we can mount it on the camera if we need to. We can mount it on a tripod. We can stick it in the corner. We can handhold it, even has a little like handle. 
And this is gonna be running off of these batteries right here. So that's gonna be our light situation. Obviously we've got a plethora of USB cables. We also have some micro HDMI cables for our small HD field monitor here, which is also going to be on the A7, giving Nick another thing to help him focus because the, uh, the built-in viewfinder on that is, it's peaking kind of sucks versus like an actual field monitor. So that's why we're bringing that as a, just another reference point for keeping focus. We have also got, this is the ABX wireless lav. I'm obviously not talking on that right now. I'm talking on the, the standard one. This is what we'll be doing our vocals with. I've also got my handheld AVX in case I need it for like the trade show and stuff. We haven't used this in forever. It's a little dirty. We have to charge all this too, obviously. We, what else do we got here? Um, battery charger or battery case for my phone so I can stay nice and connected while I'm there for tweets and Instagrams and loud squeaky bus breaks, whatever. Oh, that's not broken, I swear. And if it is, uh, whatever. Here are sticks. So we've got the Benro. This is the uh, TAD37C. This is carbon fiber. It's nice and light, it's got a hook on it so you can hook it on your backpack or whatever and it's, it's not heavy at all so we can travel with that easily. It's gonna work when we need sticks for the camera or we need a mount for the light, obviously. But this is what we're gonna be using mostly for our, uh, our shots at CES and this is what Nick will be using. This is our monopod. Got this off Amazon actually, I'll put a link to this down below. It's a King Joy and it's also got our Manfrotto 502 head on there which is what we'll be connecting the camera. Now, because I'm tall, we also needed a monopod that went nice and high. Now this is higher than we actually need it, I think. But the thing is that we actually have the ability to go nice and high and eye level if Nick wanted to. So this is how that's gonna be. But because we have the tilt and pan head, Nick can still get some really smooth shots when we're on the showroom floor and stuff. So this is what it's gonna kind of look like when we're out there at the trade show, or at least what Nick's gonna look like while we're doing this. So yeah. So this is Nick's camera bag right here. This is where all this gear is gonna be kind of shoved in. Is this the one that I bought and that I gave you? Yeah. Oh, I thought so. I was like, that looks familiar. <laughs> uh, Nick's camera bag, we'll be putting all the batteries and stuff in. I'll have a, a, a backpack. Uh, Brian will have a backpack, so we'll have a lot of backs helping carry this stuff. We're like Team Husky. We're the big guys of YouTube. And I don't mean by channel size, I mean big. Look at me. In terms of audio though, Nick will be monitoring everything on his EMU Purple Hearts. These are nice wood closed back headphones, but they're super lightweight. That's why these are coming. They're closed back, sound isolation, but they're super light. Light is obviously the key word here. Now you might notice there's no laptop or anything here. It's like, Jay, how the heck do you plan on editing these videos? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's kind of ironic that I said that we wanted to pack light because I built a desktop to do all my editing in. I, I have used powerful laptops and trust me, there are some very powerful laptops out there, but I have, I've just decided that I want to go through the content as quickly as I can so that's why I built myself a micro ATX rig right here that's fairly temporary. I don't know if this will stay together. I've done this before. I did this one other year. You can find an old video. In fact, I'll link it if you guys want to see an old Retro J video where I built a mini ITX system that I took with me to uh, do editing with in the hotel. This is an Intel 7900X, 10 cores, 20 threads, overclocked to 4.5. Does nobody do brakes around here? I'm opening up a brake shop, Nick. We're gonna make a mint. We've got 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator uh, DDR4, 3200 megahertz. It's got a GTX 1080 Ti in there. Uh, it's water-cooled with a Kraken X52. It's sitting inside of a uh, NZXT H400. It's got a EVGA X299 micro motherboard on there. It's got all SSD storage that are, we have a specific scratch drive just for editing. Adobe loves speed. And I don't, I don't mean drugs. I mean, it likes megahertz. It likes core speed. So that's why it made sense for me to go with Intel and a 10 core 20 thread that's overclocked far because I'll actually get better results than going with a higher thread count Intel CPU. And the same reason why, well, there's two reasons I didn't go Threadripper. One, they don't have a micro ATX board available and I don't, if they do, I don't have it. And then two, the same reason. All those cores would go to waste because it, I can only go about 4.0 gigahertz out of that. And so going with the higher frequency made more sense. But then we'll be bringing a mouse and keyboard, IPS panel, setting that up in the hotel and just churning out videos as fast as we can, as keeping the quality up, hopefully. Hopefully you guys will watch it. Anyway, that's what's in our bag. Guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you. Well, by the time you guys watch this, we'll already be at CES. We hope you guys will check out our coverage. We're gonna do the best we can to keep it interesting, and like I said, there will be some automotive, high-end automotive performance stuff. I mean, smart cars and electric cars, those are cool. But we care about tire burning, gas guzzling, fast cars, and that's what we're gonna be taking a look at while we're there as well. Anyway, we're gonna go. Again, huge thank you to EVGA for sponsoring our trip. We will see you guys at CES 2018.